Hi. In this video webinar section, what I'd like to talk to you a little bit about is helping our patients to really understand the role that their dental insurance plays. Clearly, one of the most common questions I'm ever asked is, what do you say? What do you do? How do you handle those situations where you've done an incredible treatment plan? You've figured everything out. You've done this remarkable case presentation. And the patient levels you, floors you and your team by asking that absolutely gut-wrenching question. Does my insurance cover it? See, once they ask that question, they've taken us completely off our game because we had not first created a context for the role that dental insurance was going to play. That's always going to be a challenge for us. If we leave the discussion about insurance until after we've given them the ideas of the kinds of things that they need to have done, there's a really good chance we're going to lose this discussion. So here's what I'd like us to think about doing. I'd like us to think about finding a time and a place to phrase a conversation about the role of dental insurance before you ever look in their mouth. It's critical. It's critical. If we can have a conversation with them before we've discovered some things, before we've uncovered some findings, before they've become curious about what's happening in the mouth, if we've had this discussion completely separate from what we see happening in their mouth, then they can take a fairly objective stance on what dental insurance really is and what it isn't. Well, the best time to have that conversation then is probably when they're a new patient. And the best time to have that new patient conversation with them about insurance, of course, is before you ever look in their mouth. I'm going to tell you how I like to do it, and, and you don't have to do it exactly this way, but this is a pretty easy way to introduce the subject, cover it thoroughly, and then you've got it on the shelf so that later on when you get down the road and you are talking about a treatment plan presentation, the two events have been separated. I've usually got my patients in and I'm going over their medical and dental history. I'm going to review some stuff like that with them. I'm going to have some small talk going on. There's going to be a conversation. And somewhere during that pre-clinical kind of interview, that time that's before I'm sitting down to play dentist with them, we're visiting, we're talking about some stuff, I've got their health history forms out, their biographical information, and I know whether or not they have dental insurance. It would be pretty easy for me to open the door and start that conversation with a neat little kind of self-deprecating, I mean, not for you personally, but self-deprecating for dentistry conversation where I could say something about their dental insurance and something about how it's a little interesting and then that would open the door for me to answer some questions that I probably put in their mind. Let me tell you how I would do it. If I were sitting there talking to you and I noticed that you had dental insurance, I might say something like, you know Jim, I notice here you have dental insurance and I always, I always find that kind of funny. Now believe me, you can't stop there. If you stop right there after saying it's kind of funny, that patient's going to be upset because they do not find the fact that they have an excellent benefit like dental insurance funny. They find that it's an excellent benefit. So you've got to continue on and carry on through that conversation right away. Don't miss a beat. So say something like, you notice, Jim, I've noticed here you have some dental insurance. I always kind of, kind of find that kind of funny. And the patient's thinking, why do you find that funny? I go, you know why? And they go, why? And they might actually say why or they might look at you with their face and say why, but it gives you an opportunity to answer the why. And the why is, well, because we actually invented it. And then pause for a second. Let them sink that in. Let them think about that. Dentists invented dental insurance? What are you, nuts? No, we did. In fact, it's kind of like having the wolf guard the chicken coop, isn't it? And the patient agrees with you because that's exactly what it sounds like. That's the wrong person to design dental insurance. But then you go on to say, but we really didn't do a very good job. First off, we named it dental insurance. Now listen to this definition. And you know, Jim, it's funny. If you look up the word insurance, in the dictionary, it actually says insurance is when a third party takes the risk for a catastrophic loss. How much is your insurance covered? And they're going to tell you a thousand or twelve hundred, maybe if you're lucky it's fifteen hundred dollars. So then you can ask, well Jim, is that catastrophic to you? And he's probably going to say no. I go, it's a lot of money, it's more money than I have in my pocket right now, but I wouldn't call it catastrophic. In fact, I would think about catastrophic when I think about something like uh, your house burning down or you totaled your car and, and nobody got hurt or you had open heart surgery. Those are catastrophic events that we have to have insurance for. Gosh, I hate when people do that. Insurance for. See, it's not really like it's an insurance program, Jim. It's more like it's a dental assistance program offering you first dollar coverage for maintenance kinds of activities and things like that that you want to have done. 
The second thing I might bring out is I might say, now that I've defined for you what dental insurance is and what it isn't in a little sense, I'm going to give you an example that's concrete that you'll be comfortable with. So now I turn to him and I say, Jim, you know, it's kind of like if you had car insurance. You know, can you imagine if you had car insurance, you totaled your car, and you went down to the adjusters, and you're going to get it fixed, and he said, no problem, you've totaled your car, and you called down there, and it was Geico, and so this uh, little gecko's talking to you with a cute little Aussie accent. He says, no worries, mate, you've got Geico. We'll cover that. And you say, well, great, I'll bring it down, and he writes your check for $1,500. bucks. you would say, well, where's the rest of the money? He said, that's all we cover. You choked a little booger's eyes out. Well, of course you would, because that's not coverage. That's an assistance program that helps you do maintenance work. See, if car insurance were like dental insurance, it would cover oil changes, lube jobs and filters, tire rotation twice a year, and maybe new tires every three to five years. That's a maintenance program. And the patients nod their head and they agree with that. It makes sense to them. The final thing I throw at them so that they have a full understanding of that role of dental insurance is I say, you know, the other thing that we screwed up on is not only did we name it wrong, we forgot to index it for inflation. Jim, how long have you worked for General Motors? And he says, well, almost 30 years now. And what did it cover 40 years ago when dental insurance first came out? And he says, well, I, th I think around $1,200 or $1,500, the same as it does now. And you go, exactly. See, what else do you have in your life that hasn't kept up with inflation? If you had car insurance when you were in high school 40 years ago, there's a real good chance that that would cover the loss of a greater valued vehicle today than it did 40 years ago. See, these constructs make sense to patients. If we had kept up with inflation, somewhere between 3.5% and 4% over that 40-year time period, started with $1,500, we'd have over $8,000 available for coverage. Think about it. We call it insurance and it's not. That's kind of odd. It doesn't work like insurance because insurance covers catastrophic losses like your car, your life, homeowners, those kinds of policies. And then finally, we didn't index it for inflation. So we have three very good differences between what insurance really is and what it isn't. Now we can go ahead and do the examination, discover the findings, talk with the patient, and they still might want to know if their insurance covers it. But now it'll purely be a how do we handle this financial question. It won't be this, well, my insurance company doesn't cover it, therefore it must not be important thing. So remember, get a chance to have the conversation, use these kinds of definitions and constructs when you're talking to your patient, and finally, finally, most important, have that conversation before you ever look in their mouth. Thanks.